Well, good evening, everybody. Kind of a, I don't know, an impromptu video tonight. I just kind of dove into project and figured it might be of interest to some folks. So yesterday, March 7th, Solar Assistant released a beta update to their software, which allows Lux Power inverters to have a hardwired RS-485 connection between the Solar Assistant Raspberry Pi and the inverter itself. Now, if you're not familiar with Solar Assistant, it's a monitoring tool which allows you to see almost real-time statistics on different devices. I've done multiple videos on Solar Assistant in the past. In fact, I'll link to a little playlist right here if you're interested in you know, what Solar Assistant is. So they released this update for Lux Power inverters, which also includes like the current EG4 style inverters. So you've got the EG4 6000 XP, you know, 18 KPV, and, and all those different models. Uh, this should apply to them as well. Now, the project that actually got me digging into things was I wanted to see how this would work with my 6000 XP. And I had thought that there was just an RS-485 port on the 6000 XP that I could just plug into using a USB to RS-485 cable and boom, I'd be done. Well, in looking at the manual, there isn't an actual port that's dedicated for RS-485. There's, there's the battery port, which does CAN or RS-485, but that might only be for the battery connection. And so I was trying to figure out, well, how do I make this work on the 6000 XP? Now, I do want to say that this is not, to my knowledge, endorsed by EG4 at all or Lux Power. This is just me tinkering around and figuring it out. So with that warning out of the way, <laughs> let me show you what I found. All right. So like I said, this is a <laughs> very, very impromptu video. Bench is all messy. Inverter is still halfway torn apart. I saw that there is no direct RS-485 connection other than the battery communication port, which I'm already using for CAN. So I had tried making a splitter that still lets me use the CAN ports on pins 4 and 5, but uses the RS-485 on pins 1 and 2. And it didn't work. If you look at the manual on in section 8.2, at least in the paper copy that I have, it says that there is an RS-485 connection for third-party communications. So I was trying to figure out exactly where this is. And in that section, it says that it's tied to the wireless dongle. So you can't use both the wireless dongle and the hardwired RS-485 at the same time. So I thought, okay, but that still doesn't tell me where it is on the board. Right up here is where the Wi-Fi dongle comes in and plugs in. So I decided to just pull the board and see if I could figure out exactly which of the four pins were used for RS-485. And I don't know how much of this is actually gonna show up, but right here is the Wi-Fi terminal. And if you look closely, there's only two traces that come on the bottom of the board and they come down here, tie into two pins here, and then they come down to this set of terminals right here. Well, this set of terminals is actually the plugged CT connection one. So I grabbed my meter and I double checked. I toned out these top two pins, toned out to pins seven and eight on the CT1 port. And I'm in a very tight space right now, so I'm not gonna repeat that toning. So we'll go and tighten these back down just so they're not moving. Everything is powered off, by the way. So we'll go and pull the plug out of CT1. I still have the Wi-Fi disconnected here. 
just because I was testing it, trying to find those traces. So this is my jumper that I was using for the battery terminal connections. But I rewired it so that I'm using pins 7 and 8. Pin 8 is A, pin 7 is B. And you might be able to interchange those with RS-45. I actually don't know. So it could be backwards, but it works. So we'll take this. We already pulled the plug. Plug that in there. Turn on our battery connection. Turn on the power switch on the side, the inverter. I will plug in my battery communication cable. So here I am in Solar Assistant on the configuration page. We select Lux Power. And in the past, you can see I have net zero for a wireless network connection already configured. But I switched it to that USB to RS-45 cable. And then I hit connect. Discovered address one, and then it went connected. Now the first time that I did this, it actually said that it couldn't find it. And I don't know, maybe I jiggled the cable or something, and then all of a sudden it said that it connected. So you might have to do some cable jiggling, I don't know. Jumping over to the first page, we can see we've got 39% battery. If I come and turn the actual inverter portion on, I don't have any load cable connected to it, but we should at least see something coming out of the battery. It's funny, it does say hybrid mode, but I don't remember if it did that from the wireless standpoint in the past. We can see our temperature. So we're outputting a few watts here. Output voltage, 240 volts. So there we go. Power management. So we still do have power management section here. And then we've got our inverter settings. And if I come up to the configuration, we can see the connection type is a serial connection. Now this is the beta, as you can see down here, from March 7th, 2025. So if you wanted to go and connect up the RS-485 directly to the Raspberry Pi for Solar Resistant, I ended up just picking up the RS-485 cable directly from Solar Resistant, and it comes telling you which wire is RS-485A, which one's B, and which one's ground. And I just made up connection for a different inverter, which is why you saw I used the RS-45 jack instead of just wiring this directly. Now some folks on the forum have used just a little USB converter. It looks like this. This is a USB to CAN reader, but same concept. So it'll come, hey, quit messing with the stand. <laughs> so it'll come with a little terminal block on the back and you wire in whatever wires you want to use and then you make up your RJ45 connection. So you could do this exact same thing. In fact, this one's actually using pins 7 and 8. So you would wire pins 7 and 8, wire up your plug, and then you're good to go. So there you go. That, that shows you how you can use the Solar Assistant Beta and hardwire an RS-485 connection from the Raspberry Pi into a 6000 XP inverter. And now the 18K, maybe the Flex Bosses, I don't know. I don't have any of those models. Um, you know, maybe the 12K PV, those, I think those might actually have a port labeled uh, INV485 for inverter RS-485. So for those, you just have to use your RS-485 cable, make a plug based on what that inverter's looking for, and then plug it in. And now, with the 6000 XP, now that we know what port we can use, we can do the same thing. So I'll leave links down in the description below for, you know, like Solar Assistant, if you're looking for, you know, a pre-built copy of Solar Assistant, if you're looking for the USB to RS-485 cable, I'll link to that. I know the manual says that you can't use both the Wi-Fi and 
the RS-485 port at the same time because you're probably going to cause conflicts. I haven't tested that out yet. By the time this video goes out, I probably will have tested it. But at this time, you know, the manual says don't do it. So probably don't want to do it. This is beta software that you actually have to opt in to be able to get that software. By default, everybody's going to be on the stable branch for Solar Assistant. You actually have to opt in. So again, hope it helps. <laughs> it wasn't something that I was planning on doing. Um, I was just trying to figure out how do I make this work? So with that, I'm going to let you all go. I got to button stuff back up and then head upstairs and just relax for the night. So uh, y'all stay safe, stay warm, and catch up with you later. <laughs>